G'day everybody, how are you going today? I am bringing myself into focus. Now, why am I doing that? And that is because I'm shooting on a fully manual lens. And which lens is it? Well, it's the one in the title. Why not? This is the Miki 50mm 1.2. Now, it's nothing like this one here. This is the Nikon 50mm 1.2, which does all sorts of cool stuff, like pretty much doesn't focus breathe. It suppresses chromatic aberration and flaring like crazy. It's got two focus motors in it, so it's super fast. So these things are completely different. But we are gonna go out and we're gonna test this Miki to optically, because optically, even so it doesn't have all the fancy stuff, Optically, this thing might be quite good. And right here, right now, it looks pretty good. And as you can see, we're at 1.2 and I can pretty easily fall in and out of focus. Anyway, I am going to take that lens off the camera and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Well, like magic, it's, uh, it's just appeared. And now the 50mm Z is what's over there on the Z6. And as you can see, I mean, this is a large barreled lens. I mean, it needs to be. It's a 50 millimeter 1.2. All right, let's go and find out. Is the Miki 50 mil 1.2 Z version, is it any good? G'day everybody, how are you going today? As we talked about in the intro, we are here to test out some 50 millimeter lenses. We have the Z 50 mil 1.8S, we have the Z 50 mil 1.2S, and we have the Miki 50 millimeter 1.2. And they all vary in price, with the Miki, which is fully manual, being the most inexpensive. So, we probably know how this is gonna go, but it'll be good to see. Now, I'm gonna be recording the viewfinder on the Atomos Ninja so we can actually see what's going on for the camera. And hang around because a little bit later on we will jump into Capture One and check out all of these files close up and personal. We're starting here with the Miki. 50mm 1.2. So I'm going to hit record. All right, we are rolling. Try and be able to get as sharp focus as possible because this is not an autofocus lens. And you can see here micro movements it's pretty hard to get it sharp but we're trying to get the g there on uh beverages all right so here we go we'll take a shot and i will just double check that we are on two second delay that's what we want all right here we go and shooting one two we're also on silent shutter to make sure we don't get any camera movement whatsoever. We'll take a second shot for safety. There it is, that's done. Now we're gonna move the focus point to the wall here. Now we're gonna zoom in on that point and try and pull focus. All right, so here we are looking at the wall here, very close up, again, trying to find focus. This lens just simply doesn't seem solidly sharp and, and that feels like as about as sharp as I can get it so we'll just roll with that somewhere in there we're obviously very zoomed in taking a shot 1000 2000 there's a shot we'll do another for safety and there it goes and then the final thing I'll do is flick over to video and we're just going to record a little bit of 4k video which is what we're doing right now we'll just do 10 seconds and we're doing that in the close-up position and I will show you the focus action here. We can see that those background areas look quite nice, and but it's pretty hard to see focus. As you can see, so much is in focus. Here we are at 1.8 on the Miki. We're going to move over now to the Z 50mm 1.8S. Let's do that. And now we are shooting with the 50mm 1.8S Z class lens and we're going to get the close up. We're shooting 4K video. Now we can, we do have autofocus, so we can just touch the focus over there in the background. Although, let's go this, the spot, back button focus, and there it is. So that is the 50mm 1.8 looking good. Now we'll go over to stills, stop recording, 
go over to stills. We're going to start recording up here. There we go. And again, we can just touch the focus and it shoots. Now, we want to have the one second timer. And as it, it's just such a great feature, the touch to, touch to focus and to shoot. I really love it. So we'll do that again. But let's zoom in. And how different does that look versus the Miki? And, you know, it's really hard to say. Does that, does that look sharper? I reckon it probably does look sharper. All right, there's shot number one. Do another one for safety. And then we're gonna do the barrels in the background. And we'll do an, another for safety. And there it is. Now, is we're just gonna shoot the 1.2s at 1.2. And we'll shoot a little bit of video here. Get that in focus. There it is. That looks fabulous, that short depth of field. And we're getting that on the, in 4K here. Just delightful. Let me just change that color temperature. Not happy with that. I think we need to be uh, not daylight. Interesting. Don't know, don't know why that changed to daylight. That's a much better color temperature. Prefer that a ton. It's nice, isn't it? And that, that, I mean, that lens. Okay, so why I've chosen this is because, of course, we have this backlight here, and I want to see how that backlight behaves with the Miki. What are we going to get in the way of chromatic aberration and so on? Because this particular lens, the Z50mm 1.2, it truly is a very cinematic lens, and we can see it here in this image. So we've got some video. We'll take some stills. We'll flick over to stills. Just make sure I get everything right. Okay, that's 1.2. Extraordinarily bright. It's, we're at 100 ISO. We're at 1.2, but I can take this to like one eighth of a second and there's still more than enough light. So we're gonna turn this on. We're recording now. And I'm just gonna make that focus point smaller. I think it's a bit big. Let's go to that one there. Fabulous. We are on two seconds. We are there. Fabulous, okay. So we're focusing, as you can see, on the crate. There's our shot. We'll do another one for safety. Yep, and go, 1,000, 2,000. Boom, we are rolling, fabulous. Now, let's, let's go to the background here on this light and, uh, and get that in focus. There we go, that's now in focus. And we've got a shot of that and we'll get one more. Now we're gonna change over to the Miki. We're looking here at the, geez, that's very hard to, so I'm just trying to get that back wall and that light in focus. And we are zoomed in pixel for pixel, I think. Somewhere there, but we're doing this manually, so it's quite difficult. This is the whole image. Weird. Let's go again. All right, there we go. Done. Another one for safety, done. Okay, now we're gonna to go to the foreground and now we'll turn this on so we can see it. And you know, all we're doing is eyeballing here and the movements, I probably would make the focus on this a longer throw because I'm doing absolutely micro movements. And it's extraordinarily difficult, but I think it's somewhere in there. Oh. Okay, and there we go. Another one for safety, and there we have it. So we can go back and now and look at these images. We'll just get some video before we stop of this one focused on the beer keg. Beautiful. And I have to say, just looking at this, eyeballing it, it's actually, the chromatic aberration is looking pretty good, as well as purple fringing, I think. 
this light is clearly nowhere near the sun, so we'll have to test it out into the sun. But with this light, it's working super well. shooting with the three different 50 mils. I did focus on the two 50 mil 1.2s the most, but this here is just a quick image from the Nikon Z24 to 72.8 because it is just such a sublime lens. The trinity of lenses just are outstanding. There it is there. 24 to 72.8s on the Z62. I love everything about this image, the color, the textures, the shapes, the sky, everything. Very quickly, I'll show you the only difference I'd make is potentially just vin vignetting a bit just to make it a bit more cinematic, a little bit more kind of gothic. Anyway, jumping into where we started with the 50mm, here is the 50mm Miki wide open. Now, this is really pushing this lens. This is the very first time I'd used it. I was actually recording a different video down here at Albert Park Lake and decided to give this a bit of a go. Now you can see here, there is our focus point. What are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing we're seeing uh, just a little bit of a softness that's going on. Now that, that, that of course, that softness is because it's out of focus. We're at 1.2 here. Let's look at the next image. And again, it's, it's because you're manually focusing, it's really hard. It's really hard to know what's in focus. This is the official part. We're on the Z7, not with the latest version of the software. I need to update the firmware, but we can see we're with the Z 1.2. And this just shows what this lens can do. It is nighttime. We are at 1 320th of a second, 1.2. My focus, I believe, is here on this thing. So here we are working at night. We've got a high shutter speed from my perspective for a non-moving object. We're at base ISO and we can create ridiculous things like this. Now, as you can see, I've brought the shadows up to maximum and I have brought the exposure up a lot, but this is the power of the Z system. We're pushing it this hard and it is still looking very happy. Let's go into 100%. I don't have a problem with what I'm seeing there because we're shooting at base ISO, so we've got so much wriggle room i talked about how much i love the 50 mil 1.2 s lens well nothing's changed let's keep moving another frame this time the focus was here on the first flying object and you just have this beautiful out of focus as we fall back here now we can we can push these files harder we can make it brighter but i feel like that was the optimal spot where i was starts to just get too crazy bright let's just bring that down a little bit but of course you could happily even be somewhere in here some people might think that is okay there is no right or wrong i mean the thing about fine art photography is well you're creating your vision there's no right there's no wrong everyone's going to have their different opinions so what i was experimenting here with was which which of these let's call them fish tadpoles should be in focus and then adjusting the framing to get this one as the leader as you can see i didn't change the adjustments from here on out but that's not really what we came for we came for a comparison i just wanted to continue to show you how glorious this lens is i was just seeking out the right frame i think here we go i finally found a good spot and you can just see how well this is rendered and is in focus we're at 100 percent here and look at that i mean it's just still blows my mind just for the quality i've been doing this for a long time and the technological leaps that we have had over the last three decades are absolutely outstanding Okay, so I wanted to start here with the Miki in my front yard. And here it is in bright sunlight, handheld. 
100 ISO. I think we're on the Z62 here. Yes, we are on the Z62. You can see here it's performing quite well. This is it wide open at 1.2. I've done very little except for bringing the highlights down, but you know, it makes a bit of a difference as we can see. I think it's worth seeing those. We could bring up the color a bit. We could even bring the exposure down so you get more of the flower. Here it is again with the exposure being a better one. The second shot. But I am happy with the level of quality of rendition. This is still with the Miki. Now the reason that we've got numbers here is because at this point I put in the information for the stabilization. Because if we look here, we can see there is no lens information here. It just knows that it's a 50 mil lens. But if we, uh, let, let's say we go here to this shot, we can see the lens here in this one. But in this one, there is no lens. So the reason it's got this information is because I dialed it up for the in-body image stabilization, which you can do. And speaking of in-body image stabilization, here's a little bit of video shot at the same time. And you can just see how smooth this is handheld. 50 mil must be an optimal size, an optimal focal length, because this is just so smooth. Here we are at 100% in good sunlight. And I think this lens is looking really, really nice. It's a good result. All right, let's jump into the nighttime comparison. And this here is the 50 mil S. What we're doing here is we're focusing in the background. This is the S lens. And, you know, if we go into 100%, this, this just all looks beautiful and clean and cinematic and just extraordinarily professional and good. Then let's go to the Miki and the first thing we can see here is that it's just simply not the focus is not as tight so i don't think that's definitive I'll, but let's look at the things that we can see here here we are getting the beer keg in focus now the thing about getting it in focus but manually is you're eyeballing it you are literally just eyeballing it end of story so you can argue here that it's actually, it's a user error and not lens error. I tried very, very hard and we can see looking on the footage from the Atomos Ninja, we've tried very hard to get it in focus. Let's assume it's in focus. And if we look through the plane here, look on the ground, you can see that it is falling out of focus either side of this plane in the middle. So wide open, we could argue that this lens is, well, it's nowhere near as sharp. That's, that's where it's at. But this is at f 1.2 and the Nikon lens is ridiculously more expensive. Also, if we look in the out of focus areas, I do prefer the rendition in the background of the Nikon lens in so many different ways and aberration and so on is suppressed better. It's just like if we look at the light shape here, that's rounder. This is less round. If we look at this blue going through here, this is larger on the right and smaller on the left. So there's a lot that the Nikon lens, look at the chain here. Theoretically, they should both be in focus. And it's just, it's just if the, the clarity, like the, the ghosting and what you see in the out of focus areas, it's just way more jittery on the Miki than it is on the Nikon. I, I mean, I don't call this jittery at all. If you look in that area there and you just look at the difference going through here, and I think we're just getting a bit of light bouncing around, just a tiny, tiny little bits of light bouncing, and it just creates this sort of ghost. Yeah, I do prefer the S lens on all fronts, but of course you're paying uh, four to five times more, but I just like the result way, way better. Here's a shot here taken on the 50 mil 1.2 S, again, just showing how glorious it is. So here's the bokeh balls. Here's the Miki on the if we go into a hundred percent and we're looking at exactly the same area which is roughly in the middle we can see here that the miki is just it's 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 not as soft and sort of delish but it's also they've also got these little uh little targets in the middle like what's going on there i'm not sure if someone knows what that is and then if we look at these balls here, you can see the green line is more significant. Now, 
yeah, at the end of the day, I've said it before, bokeh wise, you know, each lens is different and I don't mind the character of the different lenses. But when looking at them side by side, again, in this case, I prefer the Nikon. But I don't, I don't dislike the Miki. You like looking here, the Miki's actually brighter. The colors are brighter. This is brighter. But, you know, again, I, I wouldn't be upset by either of them. Now, if we look at the shape, we're now at the edge of the frame here. And we look at the shape, they're both kind of lemon shaped. Uh, but I think the Miki is more lemon shaped. I, I'm not 100% sure what these little dots are here and how they happen and what's going on. It's perhaps the same sort of thing as this. But either way, I'm actually really happy with both of those renditions. I mean, again, we can see here this lemon is not as lemony as this lemon. The shapes on the Nikon hold out a little bit longer, but does it really matter? I don't know. That's a that's an individual taste. So what I want to show you here is we have the fifty the Z fifty mil one point two S at the bottom, the Z fifty mil one point eight S at the right, and the Miki top left. Now all of these files are untouched. We can see these two are at 1.8. And we can see that the light transmission on the Z1.2 at 1.8 is higher. That's really interesting to me. There's more light coming through on this lens when they're both at 1.8. And this one, which I believe, because we can't see the metadata, is set to 1.8. So it has somewhere in between these two in the way of light transmission. But let's look at the serious stuff. Let's look at rendering, focus, and so on. So here we are at 100%. And the focus point was around this area here. And we can see with these images, the beer kegs just look amazing like they are extraordinarily well rendered and both the 1.2 and 1.8 lenses just look outstanding at 1.8 now i'm just going to bring this one up a little bit to match light transmission wise because we can see here the settings are identical one iso 100 half a second f 1.8 so there is something going on there. We'll bring that up a smidge. And, and really, is that showing us there's almost a stop difference? Maybe not quite that much, but that's it's really quite interesting. Also the way, to my eye, the way it's dealing with the blacks, but that might be to do with the fact that we're bringing it up. Anyway, I do need to repeat again, we are focusing by hand, by eye, and it's very difficult to do when you're talking depth of field where we're at. I mean, 1.8 is not that different to 1.2. But it's if we look around either side of this thing, again, there's nothing else more in focus. So we can only say that this lens is just simply not as sharp. And the other thing that I think we can take from this is that the 50mm 1.8S, which is the first lens I got besides having the kit 24-70 to f4, is an astonishing lens at its price point at f1.8. It is very similar to the 1.2. And the Miki is just simply not as sharp. I think we can say, see that for sure. Just bringing it up a little bit. What we can look at is the out of focus background area here. Which do you prefer the most? I don't think there's anyone that's better or worse. It just comes down to personal taste at this point in time. Look, all of these lenses have their place. If you want the light transmission of a 1.2 here, as we have with the Miki, then you can get it. But at 1.2, it's simply not as sharp. This 50mm 1.2S lens, it's big, it's bold, but far out, it's near on perfect. I mean, honestly, it's near on perfect. Let's just pull the 1.8 out of the equation. So now we're looking at the Miki 1.2 and the Nikon 1.2. And we'll go to 200% just to make this a little exaggerated. But the difference is quite profound. Now again, I just want to stress here that getting focus is tough. 
I was doing my very best. The focus is supposed to be here and we can see it's not more in focus as we go past either side. So it just shows that this lens is a little soft, especially when we get in this close. But you do get the light transmission and you know, I think for a cinema lens, it could be super cool and maybe as we stop down more. So I can do some more testing and I can stop down further to see where it starts to get sharper. But here's my point. If we stop down any further than 1.8, then you may as well get the Nikon Z 50mm 1.8S because it's so good. So here's the 50mm 1.8 versus the Miki and obviously you're going to make that choice now was there camera shake I don't think so because I was had a two second pre-release timer we're on the tripod and we took multiple shots like this is pretty harsh shooting this sort of stuff you know it's unforgiving um it's either sharp or it's not but no that that's a completely different outcome so just to reiterate that this is the 1.8 and it it just look so good and let's have a quick look at the 1.8 versus the 1.2 because i know people would be interested in that now we have here this is the 1.8 on the left and the 1.2 on the right i would say that the 1.2 is sharper at 1.8 which makes sense because we're now not wide open on the 1.2 whereas we're wide open on the 1.8 but it, you know we're, we're starting to pixel peep both amazing lenses. You can see what you're getting with the 1.2 and it does offer even more. Man, I like that shot. What could we do with that shot? But gee, that, that looks like shining jewellery. I love it. Actually, that doesn't make much difference because there's already a lot of colour there. Yeah, it changes it a little bit, but this is the rendering. Even if we turn saturation off, there's still a lot of colour there. Love it. Let's have a closer look here at uh, at the Miki 50mm 1.2. Now the first thing that struck me when it came out of the box was it feels great. It's got just a lovely matte finish about it. It's all metallic. Absolutely everything here is metallic except of course for this thing here which is fine we don't expect them to be metallic and, and i just love that matte finish i think that's a, a really good look um the red you know i'm not a big fan of the red i don't, I don't like that uh but i suppose it, it kind of goes with that red there doesn't it but you know i don't mind either way i would happy i would be happy for it just to be stealth bomber black the whole thing just matte black you know just stealth bomber can't can't see it on radar now the throw here from the focus it's it's sort of short, but it's got quite a lot of resistance about it. So I, I quite like the amount of resistance in the throw. That feels good. And then the aperture, it it has no clicks. It's clickless. It's very, very smooth. You've got to look at quite accurately where you're at. What's happening here? Where, where, what are you doing? Where are you going? Obviously, because this is a fully manual lens, there is zero information coming through from from the lens to the camera. So you, you've, got to, you've got to dial up what you want. You can't see it in the camera. Of course, with these cameras, the Zs, you can get the IBIS going by choosing the aperture and the focal length, and that's built in. And I've had a little bit of a play with that, and it works super well. And I could see it a lot in the video that this thing is being smoothed out fantastically. So great work there. The fact that you can get with such an affordable lens, IBIS, basically, VR. And this focal length, the Z system seems to handle it super well. So really ha happy overall with the build quality 
and the amount of dampening or resistance on these I think is great. Some people might want it to click. I just don't mind either way, you know, because we've got EVFs these days, it's WYSIWYG, you can see what you get. So it's all good. So there it is, there it is up close. We are shooting on the Z 50mm 1.2, so you can see the ridiculous out of focus behind me and the fact that this is looking gorgeous right here. And there it is. Someone suggested that I should talk like Arnold Schwarzenegger in a whole episode because I did, I think I did, let's do it uh, in a video. So maybe I can attempt, this will probably be a complete car crash, but perhaps I can attempt to do my sign off AKA the Terminator. Here we go. All right, well, firstly, let me know what you think of the Mickey 50mm 1.2 in the comments below. Otherwise, it's been so good to see you. I would love to see you again. If this is your first time here, please do subscribe. Press the like button or I will come and terminate you. And have a great day. Hasta la vista, baby.